to get into the surgery, there's quite a narrow corridor that you have to go through, which is only, you know, it's not easy for one person to pass another. So it's already, you know, a slightly awkward environment. And then when you get in, you have to approach the desk and there's somewhere to do an automatic check-in. But that's kind of not always working. And so it's not always clear what to do or if you've been correctly recorded. I'm always a bit nervous that I won't have been correctly recorded and then I'll be sat there for ages and they won't call my name. I don't know what point to to then say, okay, well, am I actually, you know, do you actually know I'm here? Do you? So that is, I find, a little bit unclear. I often find it very hot. I often find, you know, I mean, it's the same in the hospital as well as the waiting area. It's often really, really hot. And it's kind of a sudden transition from being cold outside to being hot inside. I worry... I worry that they won't hear my name. They often kind of struggle to pronounce people's names generally and I'm worried that I won't hear, you know, and they'll call a name and it makes me jump and I'm like, was that my name? Was that not my name? So that's also a bit nerve-wracking, particularly when I don't know how long I'm going to have to wait and, you know, I sort of worry that as it's later in the day, it's going to be, it might be a longer wait. I wanted an appointment in the morning, actually, but they said that this is what they can give me, which is fine because I can do it, but I worry there'll be more backlog at this point and it will be busier. And I don't like crowded indoor situations and with COVID, even less so at the moment. So yeah, it's going to be quite uncomfortable. I don't know how long I'll have to wait. I mean, I suppose, yeah, having a sense of the waiting time. I mean, thing is... I know it's very hard for them to know this, but I suppose maybe it is something, you know, by the time, by this sort of time, maybe they know what the situation is. Maybe they know if they're running late. I mean, I think it's difficult because they don't want people then to show up late. But yeah, it would be good if I'm sitting in the waiting room, knowing that they're likely to call my name in about half an hour or knowing that they're likely to call my name in three minutes that will be kind of helpful to know. I guess then, I, you know, you're listening out and in an environment that's often quite noisy and chaotic. And yeah, I mean, sometimes I've almost jumped up because I thought they said my name, but they said somebody else's name and it's difficult to know. I guess being reminded of how things work and that you should come in and you should use the electronic thing when you have to give your date of birth or whatever or you need to come to the desk. I mean, I suppose they would, those would be useful things that could go in a text or an email perhaps because, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't go to the surgery that much. So luckily I don't need to and I try to avoid it. So it's useful to be reminded um, to how the system works, I guess. Yeah, I don't always appreciate what's going to happen and maybe I need directions. I mean, again, this is like a previous smear test. They said, well, get on the couch and then and then they were like, oh no, your feet go on that other end like this. Like, well, of course, but you know, I didn't realise that. So I guess detailed instructions that, you know, maybe they don't think that they need to give. I suppose to be going in with a list of questions and written list of questions is really helpful. And so maybe these are kind of suggestions for people more generally that it's it's easy when you're in there. Just not to be able to think the things that you might want to ask. And that happened to me. When I broke my ankle, I was just, I managed to leave the hospital with actually no idea as to whether I was meant to put weight on it or not.